just waiting for some folks to show up if anybody does. Uh, if not, we'll just keep going. Hey, look. Um, all right, so just sharing this out to folks. Alright, there we go. There's the link. I'm just going to play some stuff while I'm waiting. And we'll go from there. Hey, who's here? Say hello if you're here. isn't working. Alright. Would love to be able to see my comments. Nope. It's not going to work either. Hey. Alright. So, just to kill some time. So there's not a whole lot of people here. Um, anyway, wait a little bit longer for folks to show up. <laughs> So, Nick, you just made me nervous. Cool. Um, anyway, I'll archive this and post it later. Um, did this last year and talked about the Jazz All State Blues Etude. Um, and thought I would do it again because I've heard All State Jazz auditions for a few years and noticed some things that happen pretty regularly. Um, so I'm going to play through it. There's a couple tricky spots in this one. Um, I'll probably step on a couple things, um, but we'll see what happens. I'm using the, the Jamie Aversold play along that the requirements say that the kids will play along with. Um, and I'll just play the, I'll play the etude. I won't do any improvisation right now. Um, but here we go. So this is the 2017 New Hampshire Jazz All-State F Blues Etude. Um, the play-along comes from Volume 1, Jamie Aversold, How to Play Jazz and Improvise. One, two, one, two, Thank <laughs> you. 
So, you can tell it's not all that trombone friendly, um, but a lot of these are not necessarily trombone friendly just because they were either written by a saxophone player or a drummer. Um, no slight to them, but um, sometimes things don't always lay super well on trombone. And as I was refreshing my memory on this one, um, there's a lot of opportunities for alternate positions. Um, and if you look, there's mine. I know it's backwards, but that's the wonder of Facebook. Um, so like first measure, you've got C, F, B flat, those stacked fourths. Um, I prefer to play the, the F in sixth position because I'm not using a trigger horn. Um, those kids who have a trigger horn, it'd probably be likely that they'd play that C in first position with the trigger and then be there for the F. Um, so if I just play that, that opening lick, um, I'm out here. Instead of uh, economy of motion, um, as my college trombone professor Nick Orovich likes to say, keep the half steps together. Um, that doesn't necessarily hold true here because the B flat in fifth to the A in second is not together. Um, but it, the, the alternate positions do save quite a bit of time. Um, what I might do later is take a picture of my um, of my copy of the etude with my notations in it for alternate positions because um, it does make things a lot easier. Um, and I played that fourth and fifth measure, um, actually fifth and sixth measure, um, a little bit better than I did on the first run through. Uh, so the other thing, so alternate positions, that's going to help you quite a bit um, get through this. Um, the other thing that I've heard so many times, and I talked about this last year when I was talking about last year's etude, um, is this this whole swing articulation thing. Um, it's not uncommon to hear kids come in and play every single note and play every single rhythm, but the style is just wrong. Um, and they might do something like this. And it's just too square. Um, the whole concept and something that all of us trombone players work on for a lifetime is this whole legato tongue thing. Um, and working on making it as smooth as possible. Um, and that comes through practice. Um, if you're auditioning for Jazz All State, probably working on your um, concert All State as well, classical All State. Um, and you know, you've got that, that row shoe book um, from which those wonderful legato etudes come from. And I'm taking it off my shelf right now. Mine's quite beat up. Um, so if Roshu is not your Bible, um, then it should be. So, you know, you go over to this year's Roshu Etude, uh, number six. And again, there's my wonderful cover for my Roshu. Um, So that kind of style, that, that legato motion, legato tonguing um, through this whole jazz etude is going to be extremely important as well. Um, 
yeah, notes are important, rhythms are important, but so is style when it comes to playing this stuff. Um, and if I go through and play it, um, I will be able to show you, I'll play it again, and uh, be able to talk about some other stuff style-wise. Um, because a friend of mine, um, hi Mr. Cohen, um, asked that I talk about articulation and mentioned that there's some stuff in here that is awkward, again. It, uh, it's not exactly trombone friendly and it's um, not exactly, doesn't lay well on the instrument. Um, so there have to be ways to get around it. The alternate position thing is something that I had talked about uh, a little while ago. And um, another thing to think about is this concept of ghost notes, which you'll probably hear as I play through it again this time. One, two, position thing that I had written in for myself, but um, you probably heard at times that there were, <coughs> excuse me, um, that there were lower notes where the it, you heard the note, but it didn't speak on the horn. Um, let's see, where, where would be a good example of that? So if you're looking at the etude, it's probably like around measure nine. Yeah. Um, so if I start in eight, three, four. <laughs> Right there, so it's uh, that lick is A F D F. D kind of speaks, but doesn't really. Um, and then it happens again. Um, and the, the the weirdest spot is uh, that measure fifteen sixteen, um, that angular thing. <laughs> The, the, the lower notes tend not to be spoken. Um, they're there, but they don't always come out. Um, and then there's another one um, towards the end, like measure 18, 19. Uh, That's measure 20. Um, and then going into 21, 22. So um, that kind of stuff is something to be thinking about. The ghost note, um, I'm actually playing the note, but I'm putting the slide in the position. I'm playing uh, the rhythm, but it doesn't necessarily come out. And I'm just doing leaning over here to see if anybody has asked any questions. I don't know that I can see them on my phone, which I'm recording on right now. Um, but the, the whole legato style, if you're... Practicing this in isolation and not listening to jazz players play this style, um, then you're only going to get yourself so far. Um, the master, probably, of this whole style is J.J. Johnson, um, the great J.J. Johnson. There's a whole bunch of other guys out there, new and old. Um, do some looking around, do some listening. I don't want to spoon feed names, um, but JJ's kind of the guy to go to when it comes to this kind of style. Um, so alternate positions help and, um, the concept of ghost notes. Um, and when your high school kids are practicing this, um, it's okay to do it without the, uh, without the play along and isolate some sections. I had to do that myself. It's been, well, four years since I looked at this one. Um, and there were places, especially after I re-recognized the alternate position thing, um, that I had to just go back and, and shed slowly to get under my hands and under my slide. Um, it's particularly, I think most of us trombone players are gonna uh, 
say that measures 15 through uh, fif like 15 through the end of the second chorus is um, unfriendly to the trombone. Um, so, you know, I like we all say to our kids, you know, go slow. So, um, and then work it up tempo wise. But it's definitely, um, definitely a challenge to make this one swing, um, because of the untromboneness of of the etude um so looks like we're uh let's see oh hey look yeah. made my camera focus weird um so anyway i don't know why i'm dark all of a sudden oh flip it around technology is wonderful all right i guess i'll be in the dark now um so yeah uh i'll play through it once i'll do some improvisation and then um talk a little bit about what I'm thinking improvisation wise uh, and we'll go from there one two one two three pleased with my solo then um, but improvisation over the blues etude and I mentioned this in last year's video as well um, got to know the changes um, so many people will come through and they'll play something like this nothing but a blues scale um which is a great place to start i tell all my middle school kids when we start playing blues that um blues scale is a great place to start um but by the time we get to high school and we're auditioning for jazz all state uh we really need to know the the structure of the harmony in the song um this is a um it's a 12 bar blues but it's an, it's a different 12 bar blues it's not your standard one chord for four measures four chord for two measures, one chord for two measures, five, four, one measure each, one. Um, this one actually instead in the last four bars goes to a two. So in the key of F we go to G minor and then a five, which is C7 back to F. Um, and then there's a turnaround going back to the top of the chorus. Um, and when I'm listening to auditions, if I'm listening to the improvisation, um, I'm listening for that two five change in the last two bars. Um, if somebody knows where they're at and what they're doing, uh, it's, it's totally, totally hip. Um, 
The other thing to be aware of is your chord tones on all these chords. So, um, like, if you've heard anyone talk about the blues or teach you about the blues or you've started listening to changes and stuff like that, um, you'll know that the third of the chord and the seventh of the chord are the really hip notes. So our, um, our first chord is an F7, which is F, A, C, E flat. E flat and A, the seventh and the third, are the super cool chord tones to be playing. Um, and when we get to the four chord, the B flat seven chord, we've got B flat, D, F, A flat. D and A flat are those hip notes, the third and the seventh. Um, C7, which is our five chord, has C, E natural, G, and B flat. So E natural and B flat are cool. And that two chord, that G minor chord, um, G, B flat, D, and F, those are those are like paramount. Um, I'm really excited when I hear somebody outline a G major, or sorry, G minor chord. When we get to that ninth bar, the, or tenth bar, the uh, no, it's the ninth bar, ninth bar of the form. Um, you know, something like that. So we can really hear that that two five um, going in. So. Um, Let's see if I can do something like that. Let's see how awake I am. I'm, my coffee's almost empty, so I don't think I'm all that awake right now. Um, or not as awake as I should be, I should say. All right, so um, here's a improvised solo thinking about chord tones. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> pleased with things that I'm playing today, um, but you probably heard when I get to the 10th bar, particularly in the second chorus, um, I outlined that G minor coming down. And um, tried to outline the harmony as best I could. Um, I don't have my volume one book handy, um, and I forget, honestly, if at the end of the uh, just coming into that G minor chorus, um, it's not uncommon for these blues chord progressions to step down in the sixth and seventh, uh, seventh and eighth bar. So in this case, it would be like F E flat and then to D major. Um, I'm try. I tend to default towards that just because a lot of people will play that. Um, but sometimes if you hit an F sharp or the leading tone to that G minor chord in the eighth bar, it's kind of hip. Um, too. But knowing your chord changes and knowing where you are in the form is incredibly helpful. And connecting those chords tones is really important as well. Um, there are six of you watching. That's very cool. Um, and I feel like I'm still in the dark because I auto-focused my camera and it changed. Um, so I'm going to try to fool it into thinking it needs to be brighter. No, nope, not going to work. Um, so if any of you have any questions before I sign off, I'll um, archive this and maybe post it to YouTube as well. Um, then you can share it with students if they don't have the Facebook thing, or you can invite them or tell them to head on over to my uh, Facebook music page, which is facebook.com slash Jim Robbins dot trombone. Um, so 
I see five of you now still there. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Um, any requests, any questions before I sign off? Um, if not, you can reach me through my Facebook page, jimrobbins.trombo. Uh, and maybe I'll do another one of these sometime soon regarding the ballad, which is not one of my favorites to play. Uh, I played through it today and did some work with it, and it's just not all that fun. Um, so, yeah, in the comments of this, I'll post a picture of my copy of the Etude with my alternate position stuff in there. Um, and if you have students who want to ask questions or whatever, feel free to connect them via my Facebook music page. And that's about it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope this was helpful for you. Um, if you have any comments or anything, leave them after the video's been archived, and I'll do my best to get back and answer your question. Uh, so, about that time, thanks, everybody, for watching once again, and we'll see you later.